Welcome to the Classical Architecture Workshop. My name is Professor Brandon Rowe, and we're going to continue our lesson on the Corinthian order. More specifically, we're going to look at how do you draw the column capital of the Corinthian order. As before, we will be using the American Vignola, A Guide to the Making of Classical Architecture by William Ware. As William Ware notes, there are a couple of things that set the Corinthian order apart, one of which is the bell-shaped capital. On that bell-shaped capital, it's divided into three components. Um, the first is the astragal at the base, the bell shape um, uh, in the middle, and then the abacus uh, towards the top. Now, with this uh, capital itself, I'm going to go ahead and read here from William Ware in some of his description on how we're going to construct this. The first is that the lower two six of this capital are covered by a row of eight acanthus leaves, which we said were uh, unique characteristics of the Corinthian. These bend down at the top to the extent of half a six or a quarter of their own height. Then right above that, the next two six show a similar row of eight leaves set alternately with those below, four facing the sides of the capital and four uh, the corners. Like those of the first row, they spring from the astragal at the top of the shaft and the mid rib of each leaf shows between two lower leaves, it being really four sixths high. These also bend down half a sixth. Between the eight leaves of the second row are eight uh, calicole, or cabbage stalks, which terminate in a button upon which rests a sort of bud, which divides into two leaves. These turn right and left, the larger one toward the corner of the capital, the smaller toward the side or front under the floron. And the floron is um, that item right in the center there. Um, from each bud rise also two scrolls or volutes. And this is kind of where it uh, borrows uh, some of the language from the Ionic order. One of which uh, of these volutes runs out to support a, uh, the projecting corner of the abacus. The other, which is smaller and does not rise higher than the lip of the bell, supports the floron. 16 leaves. Uh, comprise this third row, and these curl over under these 16 volutes, making them eight masses of ornament, one on each corner of the column and one in the middle of each side. These give in plan an eight-pointed star, each point consisting of a large leaf, two small leaves, two volutes, and above them either the floron or the horn of the abacus. Between them is seen the bell of the cap with its lip." Close quote. So with that, we're going to go ahead and get started drawing the Corinthian capital. As we get started drawing the Corinthian capital, um, we're going to continue off of the same uh, base drawing that we just uh, completed. Um, and what we already set up was that uh, over here on the side, uh, we continued a, a line for the graphic scale there um, so that uh, from top to bottom it was seven and a half inches. And so we're going to get started with that. Uh, but once again, this is at three inch scale. So uh, with the diameter being one foot, uh, or if we're using our uh, a scale here, we go to our three inch. Um, and three inch equals one foot, 
for our scale, and that is our diameter, so D. And we'll be using that as we break down some of these other elements as we begin to draw uh, the Corinthian order. So with that, let's get started. So this is where we left off in the last uh, video. So just as I was saying, we uh, cr uh, drew a line up here uh, indicating uh, three inches, or this is the diameter of uh, D. And so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and strike a line across this. And what this is going to serve as is our break line. So I'm just going to do a kind of a light line that goes all the way across, uh, cutting across the column itself. And uh, from there, we're going to go up uh, until we get to that seven and a half inch mark. Excuse me, not seven and a half, uh, uh, seven inches. So going up four inches from that line we just uh, struck. Make sure that's even. All right, so this is going to serve as the top of the, the Corinthian capital. It's also going to serve as the bottom of the entablature. So with that, uh, what we need to do next is uh, we are going to create a couple of graphic scales uh, adjacent uh, to this larger one that we just drew. So we've already got a base here where we, when we subdivide it into 18 parts down below. So we're going to use that as our template as we go up from there. We'll scoot that over just a nudge. Okay. So with that, we are going to, uh, I'll bring this over this guide. So the, the column capital itself, the top part of it, um, it's uh, 7-6-D. So it's just a hair over uh, the three inches that we uh, have for the column diameter. Um, so when we're drawing this to scale, it's going to be three and a half inches. And so we're going to do a tick mark every half inch um, going down until we get to three and a half inches or until we have seven. So I'm going to grab my half inch scale here. And I'm going to make a tick mark every half inch. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that is going to give me my seven six D. Um, the other thing that we need to create is uh, this uh, one twelfth D, which is going to be used for the astragal, which is the molding that is uh, right below uh, the uh, bell for the Corinthian capital. And so for that astragal, uh, 1 12th D essentially equates to uh, a half of one of these uh, six. Or in other words, uh, since uh, uh, 1 6 D is uh, half an inch, that means 1 12th D will equal a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue my half inch scale, and I'm going to chop that in half for, to get my quarter inch. And I'm going to write for that one 1 12th D. So 
So with that, we're going to go ahead and take a couple of lo major lines across. Um, the first is we're going to get that bottom of the astragal and the top of it. Um, and then we're going to take another one, which is going to be uh, kind of the, uh, uh, the first top of this uh, first layer of acanthus leaves. We're going to take that across. Um, and then the other one we're going to take across is the, second, the top of the second layer of acanthus leaves. Then we'll take across the, we'll go up one, take that one across. That's going to be the vol bottom of the volutes. And then finally, we'll take up across another line, which will be uh, the underside of the abacus itself. So we're going to first start with that bottom of the astragal. And we're going to go up another quarter of an inch for the top of the astragal. And then from there, we're going to go up uh, two six make sure I'm square here uh, from there we're going to go up another two for uh, the uh, uh, top of that second layer of uh, acanthus leaves Um, and then from there, we're going to go up uh, each of the remaining six, uh, one six D uh, lines. We're going to uh, strike a line for each of those as well. There we go. Okay, so now that we've got those major marks um, in place, uh, the next thing that we are going to do, I'll bring back this guide, is we are, just as we did in the block order, as you may recall, uh, the, the top of the order, we've got kind of this diagonal line here. And with the block order, what we did was uh, mark that out as 9, 6, D. And so we're going to go ahead and get this in place uh, because once we strike this diagonal, um, and also this will also be able to set up our uh, uh, not just uh, for uh, the top of the abacus, the the 960, but it will also give us our 560, which, as you recall, with the block order, is the tapering in of the column as it gets towards the top. And so that will give us our, our thickness of the column, our uh, reduced diameter. That actually continues all the way up. It then flares out for that bell, uh, part of the capital, and then it transitions into the abacus. And so we're going to go ahead and get that started. So with that 96D, uh, what it's going to equate to is uh, 4 inches. So once again, I'm going to get my half inch scale here. And I am going to uh, put that half inch on my center line. I'm going to strike uh, a little line on either side of that. And then I can do one of two things. So I know it's going to be four inches here. So 
So first off, what I am going to do, I'm going to get a line that is perpendicular. Make sure we're getting squared off. And then now that I've got that, since uh, I know that that is going to be four inches, 96D, I'm going to go ahead and mark a line at every half inch. Excuse me, I, I messed up there for just a second. It's not four inches, um, it's actually four and a half inches. That's why it was throwing me off. So I'll actually uh, center this uh, on my center line at two and a quarters of an inch. And now I will mark every half inch. That lines up nicely now. And go until I get four and a half inches there. With that, I'm going to strike another line so that I can have the top of my graphic scale. Now that I have that in place, I'm going to use that to draw a line down just until I hit that bottom of the entablature or the top of the column right there. I'm also going to go in to on either side um, to be able to get my 5 6 D for the column thickness with emphasis. And this line I'm actually going to take all the way down until we hit that break line that we just uh, were talking about which is going to separate the base from the capital drawing. We'll go in two on this side as well. All the way down to the base. All right, so um, one of the things that we're going to do is we are going to dash a line. So our 1D here for our base, we are actually going to continue that up until we hit the top of the astragal. Just dash it up lightly. Um, because this is a key part, this point here, this intersection, uh, we're going to take that all the way up to our 96D, to that other intersection. And for these ones, we're going to do a dashed line, because this is going to be more of a guide as we start to lay out our acanthus leaves. Do it for the same, the opposite side. Okay. 
There we have it. We've got the overall bell shape of our uh, column capital. Uh, but the other thing that we're going to be doing is, as you can see here, um, going from uh, the far side of the abacus uh, all the way down uh, to the bottom side of the astragal, uh, it's going to create a perfect X um, or a 45 degree angle. And so we're going to go ahead and draw in those baselines right now. So as I said, that is going from uh, this point here and this other one, and it's going to go across, go to that same top of the abacus. And that dashed line just as before. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing on this opposite side. So going from here to here. and they should intersect right there at the center line. So with that, uh, we are going to uh, create a couple of uh, other divisions. Now that we've got this other uh, graphic scale right adjacent, uh, we're going to subdivide it a couple more times. So. First off, we're going to subdivide uh, the astragal itself to be able to get some of those uh, moldings. We're going to subdivide that into three parts. So 1 12th D uh, to subdivide that. We're going to use our quarter inch scale uh, to be able to get that. So let's go ahead and do that, that part first. So get my quarter inch scale. I'm going to place that here, and every four marks here, because that is 12 marks, every four marks I'm going to put a little strike line there, so that we subdivide that into three. And then these next ones, uh, if we were to continue this uh, half inch, uh, because uh, 160 is every is a half inch, um, we're going to subdivide each of these uh, these next two into fourths, and so we're just going to do a mark every quarter of an inch. So I can keep using my quarter inch scale. So one, two three and then four. I'll come up here. One, two, three and four. I'll write a four there at each of those. Um, the next two, uh, we're going to subdivide those uh, into uh, three. Um, but before we do that, this uh, top one, we're going to subdivide that into two. So we can also use our uh, quarter inch. Divide, oops. Divide that into two there. Um, and then to get these uh, ones that are going to be three divisions, we're going to use our half inch scale. Uh, because that is uh, 12 parts, and which is easily divisible by uh, 3, which is going to give us uh, 4.
one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, with that, we're going to take across a couple more lines. So for the astragal, that one that we just uh, divided into three, uh, we're going to take over uh, that first third division, that line, if I can get this to line up. There we go, that's going to be a little fillet mold. Um, and that's it for the astragal for now. Um, now we're going to get uh, that uh, uh, third, uh, excuse me, uh, the top part of the acanthus leaves. We're going to create that little uh, line there for our guide. So we're going to go ahead and put this here. Great. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with the next one. So we'll go up three, and it'll just be that top fourth. There we go. Um, and now uh, that one that we just uh, subdivided into three divisions, uh, we're going to take a line across. We're going to go up two thirds, and that last third is going to be the top of that uh, third row of acanthus leaves going across there. Great. And now uh, this uh, this next uh, third division, we're also going to go up two thirds uh, to strike a line. And this is going to be uh, the the top part of the bell as it flares out. All right, so now to be able to get some of the lines here for the abacus itself, uh, that division that we did into two, we can go ahead and take that one across. And then after we do that, we're going to create another little uh, smaller graphic scale that's going to subdivide some of those parts and pieces for us. There we go. All right, so for this top part, we're going to go ahead and create another little graphic scale. And it's only going to be a graphic scale for this uh, these two divisions. We're going to subdivide those. Great. So to subdivide these, uh, we're going to use our quarter inch scale. This first one, we're going to subdivide this uh, first part into four pieces, and then the second one into three pieces but both of which we can use our quarter inch scale to do those divisions. So for our quarter inch scale, as we're using that, um, it's already subdivided into four components for us nicely. And then as we uh, move that over to the third, there's 12 little tick marks there and every fourth uh, we are going to create a mark uh, 
You're doing a great job, everyone. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take a, a couple of these lines across. Um, those are going to be some of these uh, molding lines uh, for the abacus itself. Uh, so the first one, we've already got this major one that uh, divided that in half. Uh, the next one we're going to do is this third. We're going to go up one third and strike a line all the way across. Um, and then on this bottom one, we're going to strike a line, uh, go down one fourth, and uh, we're not going to drive that all the way across. Uh, we're just going to use that. That gives us kind of the bottom. Uh, of that quarter round molding. So let's get the, the first uh, third first. Sure we're even there. Got that all the way across. Okay, and so so this next one, if we go down just a quarter, and we're going to take this just a little bit past um, where that diagonal was, as well as the other one, and then we're going to do the same on this opposite side. All right, so there we go with, we've got most of the parts and pieces um, to be able to get the main uh, capital layout in place. Uh, so we're going to focus first on kind of the astragal, uh, the abacus, um, and getting the bell shape uh, in place. Uh, so to, to do that, uh, first off, let's Let's start with uh, the astragal here at the bottom. And so if we were to uh, create a little uh, 45 degree or uh, drawing an X in here, so we've got a little X here, um, where that X intersects this uh, third molding, we're going to just uh, draw a straight line down, and that is going to be uh, a fillet for us. And then from there, if we were to draw a 45 degree down, that is that intersection point uh, is going to be a quarter of a round. So we're going to draw that. Uh, we're going to do the same on this opposite side here. Okay. Good job. And now uh, with this upper part, we've kind of got uh, uh, too tall. And so if we went over to or just did a 45 degree there and do an X and uh, a cross. Uh, what that's going to give us is our outline there for our molding. And we can go ahead and take that all the way across. Just make that line a little bit thicker for visibility's sake. And there is our astragal. So we're going to label that. Now for our abacus. So what we're going to do is that intersection where uh, a 9, 6, and we drew that uh, diagonal line, as well as the 45 come up and intersect uh, the top of the capital or the bottom of the entablature. Uh, 
from there we're going to do a quarter of a round down um, and then once we have that uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, and strike a, a, a vertical line for our fillet uh, but that quarter round it should intersect right where we did that 45 uh, degree line there and then from there we go straight down and you remember that little uh, fourth that we created that is going to be another quarter round but it's going to be inverted and then it's going to go straight all the way down um, uh, another uh, three-fourths we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side here quarter round we're going to go straight down we're going to do another quarter round and then bring that vertical all the way down another three-fourths and take that in all right so there we have our abacus, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just label that. So th the next part is uh, we need to get the top of the bell. So the bell is going to continue up. This is our 560D. It continues up until we get to that third here um, and once we get there we're going to stop and from there we're going to do a, a quarter round out it's going to intersect where this diagonal is and then from there we're going to do a quarter round inward look something like that do the same on the opposite side oops kind of messed up there for a second and then once again a uh, quarter round from there until it hits the bottom of the abacus and that my friends is uh, what we call uh, the the drum or uh, the bell oops mine's getting a little crooked there I'm gonna take that line out just a little bit further and I'm just going to label that as the drum. Okay, so with that we're ready to get started with uh, some of the more details of the capital. So what we're going to begin with is we're going to start with the floron. It's uh, kind of a flower bud here at the center. Um, so to be able to get that, uh, we're essentially going to draw a circle uh, that is going to uh, go down. Um, the bottom of it is going to strike uh, just where the top of that bell was. Um, so if we were to, you know, you can be more accurate with uh, a compass, uh, but eventually this uh, circle is, is going to go away as we add leaves to it but we will go ahead and add that circle there uh, we'll add the center uh, we'll go ahead and add it'll be a five uh, petaled flower And in between those, we'll have uh, a couple of leaves. All right. 
right so it looks something like that we can kind of erase the guide of our circle if we want there we go uh, now uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, start at the bottom uh, and build this from the uh, bottom to the top uh, so first off, and, and I'm going to bring this over here on the side, and during this demonstration I'm just going to do this for half of the capital um, for time's sake, uh, but we'll give you an idea of how to draw uh, this component. So as we look at uh, the first leaf here, we've got our uh, guideline for 5 6 here. And uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, just bowing out from there just a little bit. And we're going to come up just a little bit past that line there for the underside of that uh, acanthus leaf. All these acanthus leaves, by the way, they kind of look like tongues, if you want to think of them uh, in that way. Um, in terms of their shape. So this first one it goes a little bit past that uh, diagonal there. All the while it's staying within those two guidelines that we created. All right. We're just going to do that portion there for now. Um, next, we're going to go to the, the larger one, uh, which is closest to the center. Uh, this one starts uh, curving up, goes somewhat vertical here. Um, and then the top of that leaf we're going to bring over, tuck it back. It also has a fold on the top there. Um, and then as it comes back, it almost touches the center line there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create these little detail lines underneath them. So this one starts kind of at the underside of the tongue, continues down vertical for a little while, and then it curves under. And there's another one somewhat parallel to that. Um, and then this one, it's, it's about in the center we're viewing this, it's going to follow somewhat the same geometry that we created. Uh, just along those lines. Um, so now that we've got those two, uh, the, the next uh, major one uh, that we're going to create is uh, goes up to that second uh, layer. So we're going to do the center one first. Um, that one, you can see it starts uh, just a little bit uh, on top of the tongue of the that inner one. So we're going to bring that up. And where that dashed line kind of intersects that next uh, vertical line, uh, that's kind of where we're going to be taking it. Um, and then it's going to uh, create the top of the leaf there curl over, come back, we'll kind of do this one since it's in the center on both sides. Um, and then it has the, the top lip that uh, curls over. So that goes above that uh, intersection line, comes down a little bit below that line, curls up, and does that. Um, it also has a center stem that you can see here. So we're going to uh, create that 
that's going to come down, connect to that other uh, inner acanthus leaf. We'll do this on both sides. And essentially, everything's going to be a mirror image. Um, let's uh, jump to these outer acanthus leaves uh, before we jump to this element. Uh, so for this next one, uh, we're going to want to uh, create a leaf. Uh, this one is just barely curled. We're seeing it more in profile view than anything. Um, but it stops uh, kind of where this intersection is um, with the diagonal. So we're going to create that shape here. Tuck that back around. And this one, you can see it hugs very tightly uh, to that 5-6-D. OK. Um, the line right adjacent to it it uh, starts uh, just a little bit off of that uh, 560 line, um, rides the line very closely as it goes up, um, and then jogs over before that intersection. Um, and then right there is where uh, that tongue starts with the leaf uh, doubling over. And then this comes back down. And as it comes back down, uh, what, what you're going to see here is that it um, tucks behind what is called a uh, coli, coli. Um, It's uh, kind of like a cabbage uh, type uh, vegetal uh, motif there that comes up to the top right below that line there it uh, it's kind of got a bundle and a couple of lines for that stem Um, and then right as it uh, leaves that intersection of the line, you've got these little elements here. Um, and then what we have in the center uh, is uh, what is called the bud and the button. Um, and, and so it kind of looks like a button there, you can see. Um, and so that button emerges over that next line has a circle on either side um, and then emerges out to the third string of uh, leaves um, and so to, to be able to get those accurate let's let's start on the outside first and then work our way towards uh, the inside so first off we're going to get this part here so this furthest leaf uh, once again this is almost touching that outside there as this leaf is uh, coming in, um, it's going to make an arc at, that almost comes and intersects uh, where this point is here. Uh, we're going to also have a second leaf that is going to dip down right there. And this second leaf actually becomes uh, part of uh, the bud and button area. And we've got that. We've got a little line that comes up here. And then one additional line that comes down. Oh, and we also forgot uh, these lines, a the center stem on this one. There we go. OK, 
Okay. So now as we get to this other side, uh, what we're going to be seeing here is that uh, that bud uh, comes in towards the center. It uh, doesn't necessarily touch it, but it comes pretty close and it still stays within that top area. We're going to draw that as that comes around and goes back down. The other part comes up to the top. Um, and then what we have in uh, the center here, right above that second uh, layer, uh, acanthus leaf, and is what we call a floret. Um, uh, a little uh, motif here. which actually is going to come up all the way until it gets to the floor on. <coughs> okay. Now we need to tackle uh, the uh, volutes themselves. So first off, we're going to we're going to tackle this one on the far um, left-hand side. Um, so as you can see here, the abacus, that flat part, uh, right uh, a little bit past that is where that curve is going to be. All of these, uh, this volute is not going to be uh, circular, as we saw in. Uh, in the ionic order. Um, that is because it's at a 45 degree and so it's uh, uh, more of an elliptical uh, type shape um, on these two corners. So that that entire uh, volute as it as scrolls down uh, you'll note that it takes up that full uh, three divisions there. So we're going to start here and it's going to stop right at the top of those other leaves, if you remember. There. Um, and then we're going to go over uh, until we get uh, pretty close to the intersection uh, with that diagonal there. We're going to wrap this down around as well. Um, and then that shape is going to tuck tuck back in. Um, it it pretty much follows that underside of the bell that we've got on this other side here uh, that we drew in. So we're going to go ahead and uh, create that. It spirals in. And it has an outer uh, fillet that's going to continue. Um, and then where this volute goes uh, is eventually dies right into uh, kind of the top of that uh, uh, bud and button area. Um, and then there's a little skinny part that, that emerges out from it. The other side there. Okay, we've got that one side. Um, the thing to note though is that there's this little element here right on the top um, of the volute itself. That is actually a little leaf um, that is coming out uh, from underneath there and folds up. So we're going to draw that little leaf, uh, and that leaf actually stops at that division that we created. All right. And actually, I'm going to 
kind of erase that top of the bell that we created. Um, it's also got a couple of other uh, uh, molding lines here that we're going to add in. Now we've got our first volute. Um, as we move towards the center, uh, you'll note that uh, this next volute um, essentially scrolls out. It continues across here. So each of these are flaring out and then tucking back underneath itself. Um, so that is where we are going to draw next. Um, this volute, though, is not as large as the other one, and it actually comes down uh, a little bit. So instead of the full uh, three divisions, it is actually just two-thirds there. Um, and it does come almost to the center. So we're going to create that. And then that one comes and tucks behind that first one. It's got a little uh, molding on it. And then just like before, it's got it's not that wide, and so it's got a little element that comes out and tucks around. Um, this will continue across. We'll do some of these mirrored elements here just so you can see both sides. We'll just draw this other side of the volume here. So there you have it. Uh, those are the the main elements. So we've got our uh, uh, colicoli here. We've got our uh, bud and button, our floret here in the center. We've got our acanthus leaves. There are three tiers of them. Um, our abacus that sits on uh, two, uh, well, three volutes on, on this elevation. Um, and that is our acanthus. Uh, shows all the details of the acanthus. Sometimes it gets a lot more detailed than this. This is more of a simplified version. But that gives you the basic elements of the Corinthian order. The only thing I would do after this is I would outline a couple of these elements. Um, and why don't we do just a little bit of that. We'll go ahead and put first off this break line here, separating the two, bring up our base, outline the astragal, we're going to follow the acanthus, outline here. Circle around the volute, the other part of the abacus, come up with the fillet, and the top. We'll actually take this one all the way across. Oh, and then one other important thing. So it, uh, in this instance, uh, we're not going to be drawing the entablature in this tutorial, but um, if the entablature were to continue up, it would continue from uh, this, uh, the column thickness, the 5,6-D with the drum, and that line would continue up, and that becomes uh, that part.
And then a couple of things we uh, we forgot to label here. This is our center line. Uh, we've got a 96D here at the top, um, but I think all of the rest we were able to cover. All right, well that's it, everyone. Come join us next time.